If you've ever wondered what to say when a potential client says it's too expensive or I need to think about it, this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna share with you six tips to help you overcome objections in your sales process. So let's dive right in. Now, if you stay until the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you my word for word sales script that'll help you sign 5,000, 10,000, and even $20,000 clients. So make sure to stick around till the end. So the first tip here to overcome the objections is to eliminate objections before your offer. A mistake that so many coaches make, me including for many years, is that I waited to address the objections until the end. And if you have all of these objections at the end, they're almost impossible to overcome. But if you set up the discovery process of your entire call beforehand, eliminating objection after objection, it makes the close so much easier. So let's talk about a standard objection that coaches have or that coaches experience. One is I need to think about it or you know what? The problem isn't painful enough. I can try to do this on my own. Nothing's more disheartening and discouraging than hearing that at the end. So what you wanna do is you wanna set up your enrollment call to ask that question up front. And what I mean by that is you wanna share your agenda up front. So one of the ways that I kick off my sales calls is to say, listen, I've got two goals for us today. The first is to help you map out a game plan for growing your coaching business. And the second is that if we feel like it's a fit to decide towards the end of the call whether or not you want my support. So I'm upfront and direct. There's literally zero hidden agenda. I'm not walking on eggshells. I'm letting them know right now and I'm checking in, is this a problem that you're actively looking to hire a business coach for and get a solution to? If the answer is no, then I respectfully cancel the call right there on the spot. Why? Because I don't want to waste their time and I don't want to waste my time. And I do this and a lot of people appreciate that forward directness. So the key here is to think about strategically, what are the most common objections that you're gonna face? And of course, there's the, I need to think about it. Uh, it's too expensive. I need to talk to my spouse. And what are the questions that you could, you could ask beforehand that eliminate those objections so that when you make the offer, maybe you have a little objection here and there, but it's so much more less significant than if you didn't address them up front. The second key to overcoming these objections and handling them is to be curious, not competitive. So this is more about your energy and your way of being. Because I can give you a word for word sales script and as I share it, I'll share with you how to download my script at the very end of this video. But if you just read those words, that's not gonna be enough. You've gotta land, you've gotta lock in your energy and, and your way of being to come from a place of service. And a mistake that I used to make a lot is that when I got an objection, I would try to make rebuttals. I would try to overcome that instead of being curious about what surfaced that objection in the first place. If I'm curious, I'm on the same side of the table. I'm not opposing this prospective client. I'm side by side with them. I'm wanting genuinely for them to make the best decision for themselves. And if the decision is not to work with me, great. I'm 100% great with that. If the decision is to work with me, that's awesome as well. What decision I do not settle for is the let me think about it, this gray area, this no man's land where no decision is made. And remember, your job as a coach is to share things with somebody that no one else in their life is willing to share with them not from a place of anger or hurt, from a place of accountability and responsibility. So when you experience that objection, receive that with curiosity, not combativeness. Feel into your body, check in on your energy. This may sound airy fairy and new agey, but it has a huge impact on your ability to help clients get clients and get them great results. The third key here to handling objections is to remember that objections are a sign of genuine interest. This is very connected to your energy of being curious instead of combative. So when I get an objection, I welcome it. I lean in, I thank them for it. I say, no problem. Tell me more about that, right? So I, instead of rebuttling that objection, I wanna go into what's the root cause of that objection? Because most of the time, the root cause is something different than what they said. If they tell you it's too expensive or if they tell you they don't have the money, almost 100% of the time, not 100%, but almost 100% of the time, that's not the real objection. So you wanna dive deeper. You wanna have in your discovery these questions that allow you to chunk down, chunk down, chunk down to find that root cause. Really, really important, but you can't do that and you won't be patient enough to do that 
if you immediately resist objections. If instead you welcome those objections and know that that's a sign of interest and you're making progress towards them making the decision, now you're gonna be on the same side as them instead of the opposing side. There's three more steps here. The fourth step to handling objections is to address uncertainty before the offer. Nothing is more challenging than overcoming uncertainty after you pitched them and told them your price. So before you share your price, what I do is I say, I know we need to discuss price still, but before we do that, in terms of my process specifically, does this feel like the right thing in terms of support and does now feel like the right time? Are you 100% certain? Because if somebody is 50% or 70 or even 80% certain, then that uncertainty will lead to them sharing objections and not becoming a client. You wanna check in for certainty or uncertainty first before you present the offer. And if there's uncertainty, you wanna discover why is there? What else do they need to know to make a clear decision? You know, and really chunk down into what is leading to that uncertainty. Because again, if you move through this too fast, which I have done in the past, and you go right to your offer, you will get that offer faced with resistance and you will not get them as a client. And you wanna come from a place of service, so let's get them to a clear certain, and if they're 100% certain that you're not a, the right mentor for them, awesome. You're gonna get them to a decision, the decision is no, which is great. But if they're 50%, if they're 70%, right, that you're the right mentor, then let's figure out what needs to happen for them to get to 100%. The two final keys here is the number one, ask deeper questions about their objections. I talked a little bit about this earlier, but that's the key. When you get the objection, instead of taking it surface level, you wanna chunk down, chunk down, chunk down to find the root cause. And the final step to handling objections for your sales calls as a coach is to reference what they already said. So when you are asking your questions, we call these traffic light questions. I learned this from a mentor of mine. You wanna make sure that you reference what they said earlier. So if you ask somebody this question, which is, you know, I'm curious, why not just keep trying to do this on your own? Why instead would you hire a business coach? And if they tell you why they must hire a coach because they've tried this and they've tried that and they've tried this and they've never gotten results, but then they tell you at the end of the call that they're gonna try to do it on their own, then you wanna remind them what they said to you earlier. You wanna reference what they already said, which is, okay, appreciate you saying that. I'm just curious and help me understand, earlier when I asked you, why not just try to do this on your own, you convinced me that no matter what, you've tried everything and you can't do it on your own. So just help me understand what's changed for you in the last couple of minutes to make you decide that you now wanna do it on your own. And now you're referencing what they said to you. So you're not combating them, you're becoming curious. Generally, that language, help me understand, is very powerful to eliminate further objections. So that's the sixth and final step to handling objections. Just keep in mind that objections are something that are part of the process. Your job in your sales process and in your marketing is to eliminate as many objections as you possibly can. And so that when you get if you get any at the end, you can handle those comfortably without any combative energy and you can serve this client to make the best decision for themselves. Now, if you want my word for word sales script, I did reference that earlier. Uh, it will be something that you can use immediately in your coaching business to start signing clients. Then just click the link in my video description or comment script below and my team will send you a copy of the PDF to download. Now, before I wrap up this video, uh, I recently discovered that only like 25, 30% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. So I have a quick favor to ask. If you've gotten value from this video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like the video so that you never miss a future video, and make sure to check out my next video up here in the corner that reveals the nine critical sales call mistakes that every coach should avoid. So click up here, watch that video. My name is Peter Scott, reminding you to be here Act now and fear less.